Good morning. It is Friday, March 19th. I'm Jason Stanton. I serve First Lutheran in Onalaska, Wisconsin as senior pastor. This is my musing for this morning. Uh, I've been using the uh, devotion that we're using at our church called Again and Again. This is uh, based on the devotion for today. Uh, although they don't separate it into days, it's the one I read today. It's about Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 to 10, and it made me think about uh, beginnings and endings, and what dates mean, and what, like, birth dates, beginning dates, ending dates, how we try to divide history into different chapters, our lives into different chapters, God's grace into different chapters, and I'm a history buff, you may know that, so I, I like dates. Uh, they help me make sense of things, and so, you know, like 1619 is is the date of the of the first enslaved people being brought to the shores of North America, and so I remember a couple years ago learning a lot about what these 400 years have meant, and you know that date actually 1619 was was new to me. I I didn't always think of of that as being the the date that things began in such a way. A date that maybe more of us are familiar with, 1776, you know, the, the Declaration of Independence and and the Revolution and all that. And then um, 1939, you know, that's when, that's the, <clears throat> the time when Hitler has uh, Germany invade Poland. These are the dates, the, the big dates of history help me understand how one thing might be connected to another. And so when I travel somewhere, I might keep in mind dates that, that are interrelated to all these other, other dates. You know, knowing, for example, that 1619 is that enslavement date puts 1863 into context. That's the year when Abraham Lincoln uh, puts out the Emancipation Proclamation. So when I think of it, it's 243 years of slavery, and now it's been 158 years since the Emancipation Proclamation. That's an interesting thing to realize, that there was a greater amount of time before the Emancipation Proclamation than there has been since. The freedom of enslaved people is... It's a much shorter amount of time than it may seem if you don't know that other, that 1619 date. Okay, so that's how that's why I like dates, but sometimes I fall in love too much with the neatness of dates. As though an idea is born on July 20th, 1969. You know, that's the date that Neil Armstrong steps foot on the moon and that event doesn't just happen <laughs> of course on that date, right? Uh, landing on the moon happens because it's rooted in another time, another thing. When President Kennedy uh, offers that speech in May of 1961, when he says, we choose to go to the moon. But he only said that because of technical advances in flight that are rooted in what the Wright brothers did and, and a political climate that's rooted in what's going on in the Soviet Union in the early 60s, which is happening because of how the United States and the Soviet Union fell out after World War II, which is rooted in the Bolshevik Revolution after World War I. And that happened because of how decadent and arrogant the Tsar of Russia had been for centuries. So, like, everything has a reason that isn't just on that date, but is rooted in other dates. I mean, we could do that forever, right? Anything that's happening has its roots in something else, which is rooted in something else. We fall in love with dates. And we fall in love with the idea of something something new beginning. There's, you know, there's scripture in, in the wisdom parts of the Bible that talk about there is no, nothing new under the sun. And I guess maybe that's what I'm getting at today. But not just that, I'm also thinking about how no single date stands by itself, which I think speaks to what Ephesians is getting at today about the grace of God. Ephesians 2 is speaking about how grace is not the result of works. 
It's not like we do so many good works and then poof, grace is given. Instead, it's by grace you have been saved through faith. Many Christians want to talk about when exactly and from that date on was grace granted to you as though you were saved at a moment, like we have a saved on date. But whatever that moment may have been, whether we, we name a baptism or an epiphany or whatever, it doesn't stand alone. It's connected. Just like all these other dates in history are connected to each other, our understanding of grace, for me as an individual, it's connected to God's giving of grace to all of creation. It's connected to the cross. It's connected to creation itself, that God created things to be good, that God chose to want to save creation from its own sinfulness. Grace is timeless. And we, who are connected to time, are made somehow timeless in faith by God. And so I think as we contemplate, as we muse on grace today, uh, it might be a, a time to consider how grace makes us timeless with God. Keep faith alive.